Greetings and konnichiwa, and welcome back to the Onyx Tavern Vlog series on Russia Sentai Tokyujer. I'm your host, Rick the Barkeep, and today let's talk about station number 44 to Subaru Gahama. So this is a uh, fairly decent episode. Um, you know, we're, we're getting towards the end, so the stakes are, are being raised. And I like that. That's one of the things about the modern Sentai, and even some of the older Sentai, I, I have to say. Um, that's something they all do well, is that when you're about four or five episodes out from the end, they start to, to build up. Um, villains get killed off, uh, a couple of plot elements are, are brought back into the fold, and we lead up to the final confrontation between our heroes and our villains. And this really seems like, it's not the first step, but it's the most definitive step where a lot of different things uh, are happening because it actually feels in this episode that they're that they're accomplishing something that they're doing something of significance specifically in this episode they're actually going to the castle terminal to defeat the castle terminal to get their town back so they're doing things that are important as as opposed to previous episodes like again the last one what they do is a dollhouse scenario. Yes, we got some character development, but as I argued, that should have happened long before this episode was in here. But again, we're, we're on track uh, to, to where we need to get to the end. So what actually happens in this episode? Well, first of all, we actually find out a little bit more about what's going on with Wright. Um, they go back to the, the Hyper Russia terminal, uh, ter uh, terminal, excuse me, uh, and the president is there. He's back again, still not sure who or what he is. And uh, in something that was a little bizarre to me, he puts this uh, desk fan up in his hands and blows on all the Tokuger. And uh, the point of it was is that it it blows away darkness. It, it has the ability to just you know detect it, blow it away, and and all that. Um, and of course, this is where we find out that Wright has been touched with darkness. Just a couple of things on this one scene that are a little bit curious to me. One, we don't see any darkness coming out of Akira. Now, of course, he is a member of the Shadow Line. His true form is still that that monster like whatever it is. I mean, again, human is only his facade. So it was a little odd to me that we didn't see any darkness come out of him in this scene. I don't know if you can argue that, you know, he's good to the point where, you know, darkness is not going to affect him anymore, or he's not going to generate any darkness. But I think the fact remains he's made of darkness. But again, that's probably one of those little nitpicky things. Um, and second of all, it's amazing this was not utilized as a weapon in the series. Um, because we did establish that the trains do have the ability to be cleaned of darkness. And of course, darkness, when it has a physical form, can also be wiped with a simple rag. Uh, again, inconsistency in what the darkness is. But you'd think that the, the president, the conductor, somebody would find a way to weaponize this fan uh, to, to blow darkness away. I mean, I'm just saying it's, it's, it's kind of odd. All right, so again, we, we find out that Wright has this darkness, and they speculate on what could be causing it. And I actually like the fact that they go back to the first episode to mention that he was on uh, the one of the dark trains. Um, and, and what their pre-assumption was is that, you know, had so much imagination they got flung there, but that's not what it is at all. What it is is not explained in this episode. Um, you know, the thing about cliffhangers is, is that you want it to be a satisfying cliffhanger, and this episode does end on something of a satisfactory note, but the thing is, we're, we're discussing so much about what's going on, but we have absolutely no clues to really put together what could be happening with Wright. It's a mystery, it's a complete mystery, and we at home, as the audience, don't have enough clues or context to put together what could be going on with him. Now, we do find out a little bit about Zet. So, as we've seen in several, several episodes back, um, you know, Zet looked into the darkness and he saw the light and he became fascinated with it. This episode says that that light that he saw in the darkness was right. That at the time that uh, the Shaolin was taken over, um, uh, Sub uh, Subaru Gahama, that it was right that he was seeing. And something happened, and again, we're not told, uh, to where, again, Dar Zet's darkness got into right, and the sparkle of right got into Zet. Uh, the episode also indicates that there were several battles between the two. They've spent a lot of time with each other, so some darkness has rubbed off on right, apparently. And by the way, this episode has 
clips of Zet and Wright fighting in the past, and those clips go on for way too long, I think. Um, you can get your point with, oh, they fight a lot to maybe have a 10-second montage of it, but I think they were just stretching for time, which is saying something because this is not a clip show. This is one of your game changers and something significant is going to go ahead and happen. But again, maybe a little bit of nitpicking right there. I don't know. But again, at this point in the game, you, you shouldn't be doing that kind of stuff. So they're speculating on what's going on. While this is happening, Glitter shows up. And turns out what I said before is exactly what they're going to go ahead and do. Remember, they could they can't get into the castle terminal because of the Shroud of Darkness. It can't be penetrated by the Drill Russia. And what did I say? Go check my videos and listen to what I said. I said that Glitter still has her train. They can use hers to go in. And what happens? That's exactly what happens. They're like, oh yeah, right. She has a train that can cut through the darkness. And so, of course, Glitter wants to go in there and in this once and for all. It seems that she's become, well, I wouldn't say a pacifist, but she just wants to end the death and suffering, and she really doesn't care if it's the shadow line or the rainbow line in this case. She just wants the killing to go ahead and stop. Now, of course, given that it is the rainbow line, they may kill their enemies, but that's all only in defense, at least most of the time. Um, so, of course, she's going to ally herself with them, and, of course, she has no love for the Emperor, Mork, or even uh, Nero at this point. Uh, so she's offered to, to help them to get into the darkness. Now, what I'm curious about is there's a scene where she says, here's my plan, this is how we can do it without killing anyone. Then we cut to a shot of the exterior of the trains being cleaned, and then we cut back and say, and it's like, oh, that's an amazing plan! To where we're not even informed on what's going on. And this is something that has bugged me a number of times in in Sentai specifically. Um, there are times where a plan is being executed or, be, or is being told. And we, the audience, have no clue what that plan is. And then what happens is, is that they, they have their plan. They don't tell us. We go through the plan. The twist happens. And then we have to be lectured. As to, oh, well, the reason it did this way is because blah, 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 this. Now, in one of my favorite episodes, the one where they have the karate master and they scale the tower, we had something similar. But the twist on that was, was very interesting. It was the fact that, hey, you know, um, I suspect this guy is the bad guy. So when we get there, we're going to fake turn on each other. And while that's happening, we're going to have the guys send back in the wings uh, on the car rush out to jump in and save us if, if we need to go ahead and do that. And that worked perfectly fine for that episode because of the action, the tension that you had to, again, scale the tower and defeat the enemy. Um, so that worked perfectly well. Here it doesn't, because what it turns out to be is that Glitter's plan is to lower the castle terminal into the darkness, that she can physically uh, make it go down deeper into the darkness. Now, I'm sure they're going to elaborate more on this uh, within the next episode um, when we actually, you know, see what happens, you know. But it seems unnecessary that we had to cut away for this secret plan. Because apparently the secret plan is we're going to make it sink into the darkness. There's no twist. There's nothing particularly interesting about that. So why is that being hidden from us? Why is that something that we don't know at that time? Now, maybe I'm wrong and there is a twist to that and something interesting is going to happen. But right now it doesn't seem likely, and it, I just feel like we're being jerked along here saying, you know, hey, let's hide from the audience what's going on, and then let's do it, and then have a flashback with footage we've already seen, and then maybe just a little bit of dialogue footage uh, of something new. That's the kind of thing that bothers me, and it really bothers me about her plan, because it seems so simplistic. So, um, that's a problem. Now, where this actually gets interesting is, basically, this is where they decide... We're going to go in there and we're going to go ahead and take, we're going to get our town back. This is what we're going to go ahead and do. And because of what's going on with Wright, everybody agrees that Wright should not be going. Um, that they don't know what's going on with him exactly. What's going on with the darkness? Why is he, you know, filled with darkness? What's the problem? I mean, again, they haven't figured it out yet. They're still speculating. And because they don't know, they're going to treat it like. You might have a disease, I guess. We're going to quarantine you, I guess would be the best way to do it. Because if he goes in there, if Wright goes there, who knows what could go ahead and happen. 
And so something I actually liked is that Hikari stands up, takes over the team and says, you need to stay. We're going to go without you. And everybody agrees to it. I like this from Hikari's uh, standpoint because, again, Wright's been the leader. Wright's been doing a lot of stupid things within the series. And, of course, they've been able to manage to get through because, well, they're the heroes, of course. But now he's made a decision. We can't let you come. This is for your protection and our protection against whatever it is that's wrong with you. Now, the episode does go a little far, I think, in actually tying him up and gagging him <laughs> with, du- with duct tape. So the episode, I, I think... I think the episode is trying to go against the other Tokuger and go on the side of Wright that you should not leave your friend. Because, of course, Wright's saying, you know, hey, it's my fight, too. I deserve to go in there. This is what I've been fighting for with all you guys. And by the way, I've been leading you this whole time. Um, and, and just the way that it's shot and the sound effects that we have is that it, we're supposed to feel bad that they're tying Wright up and leaving him behind. But I just couldn't help but laugh. I was like, why didn't we do this earlier? It's not that I hate Wright. Don't misunderstand me. I don't hate Wright. It's just that Wright, as far as Sentai leaders go, he, he's got to be down there as one of the least interesting and least competent. Uh, again, I think Hikari would make a great leader for a team because he is the most serious-minded. You know, you could have easily done a thing where the most serious-minded character is the Red Ranger, and maybe he has to learn to have a little fun to get that childlike innocence. Uh, because it, it seems like maybe what they wanted to do is like... Well, I don't know what they wanted to go ahead and do, but... Okay, the point that I'm trying to go ahead and make, because I don't want to turn it into a ramble of what they should have done in the series. Maybe that's something I'll save for later. But the episode is trying to side with us, uh, or trying to decide with Wright, saying you can't be doing this. But again, I'm just kind of laughing, like, man, they should have done this a long time ago. Because, again, they're being proactive in these choices, and they don't know what's going on with Wright, and they have to take precautions. Now, the episode kind of shows us that they were right to do this. So let's skip ahead, and what happens is, is that Wright does confront Zet at the secret base, which is, again, the tree from uh, their hometown. And when Wright tries to morph, he does. He seems to be overtaken by the darkness. Now, I'm not exactly sure what this means, but the end result is he turns into, well, the official term is uh, Tokyo Ichigo of darkness, but for simplistic, uh, simplici- simplicity, I'm just going to call he turns into the Black Ranger, just, just to make it simple for, for all parties involved. And... At the end, he's the Black Ranger. He's there covered with darkness, and he's in his suit and everything. And, of course, that's the origin of the key and the Rainbow Line edition that they're coming out with. Uh, But the indication seems to be that he's turned evil, he's been corrupted, he's got power of darkness, and who knows what he's going to do with it. Maybe Zet's going to turn him against the other rangers. Maybe he's embracing the darkness uh, to turn against them on his own. We don't know at this point, but what what it's saying is the other ra- rangers were right. That they were right about right. That something is wrong with him. It could jeopardize the mission. And lo and behold, what happens? Something has happened that could potentially jeopardize the mission. All because Wright had to sneak aboard and just go with them. So it is, it is kind of bothersome um, that that, that happened. I, 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 maybe this is going to turn out for the best. Uh, maybe this will be a good decision, but I just can't help but, but think, you know, Sentai is a great show, but what if this was something that had more lasting consequences, something where death actually mattered and when somebody dies, they die and not everything is sunshine and rainbows. What if this was a darker series where his mistake and his arrogance led to them dying or led to the death of somebody. And that's maybe something that Wright needs. He needs to be brought down to earth that something he did is going to have massive lasting consequences. Now, given that this is Tokuger and, you know, current Sentai, you know, it it tells me that maybe that's not going to be the case, that everything will be sunshine and rainbows for them at the end. I mean, of course, again, they are the rainbow line, so that seems pretty evident. Um... So again, that's just kind of a problem that I have. And the fact that he's able to sneak aboard, that that also kind of bothers me as well. Um, again, it would be nice if people in the terminal were actually, you know, guarding the trains. And it is kind of dis- uh, disconcerting that you can get into the train by opening the window, which I will remind you, 
in their own set of rules, you cannot get on without going through the little gate and having your passcode belt. Because, you know, here, and here's something else. They did take away his Reshot so that he couldn't, you know, transform with it. Okay, good move. But the fact that he got on the train tells me they should have taken his belt, too. They should have taken his pass, his, um, oh, what do they call it? I've already forgotten the name of it because it's been so irrelevant to the series. You know, they should have taken that. They should have taken his Morpher. If they really thought he was such a threat, and the fact that Wright, you know, does stupid things and can get himself into situations like that, they should have taken his Morpher and his, his Resha, and, you know, even if that belt is, you know, if, if that, you know, the, the foam Morpher, whatever it is, they should have taken that from him, because I guarantee if they would have taken that, he wouldn't have gone down the train if they followed the continuity of the series. But no, they violate the rules whenever they feel like it. Yeah, Glitter can't get on the train because he doesn't have a pass, uh, but Daigo, he can get on the train even though he doesn't have a pass at, at all. And of course, you know, ugh, it's it's just really annoying. That's the kind of stuff that, that bothers me is they don't follow their own continuity. Um, okay, so some positives about the episode as well is that um, I really like the way they made... Uh, Subaru Gahama look um, in, in in the realm of darkness because it actually looks like the, the way it's shot is that we have the, the castle terminal which we've always seen but we look right it's right below is this field of trees where their secret base is and that's where Zet is now I don't know if they film this like on a backdrop or if they film this at night but it's pitch black the wind is rustling it's really terrifying when you think about it. I mean, I've, I'm in a town of about 4,000 people, and I've walked out in the middle of the night, uh, well, not middle of the night, I walk out at like 8 o'clock on a Saturday night, and this place is pitch black, and it is scary with the wind rustling and all that, because it's a re really rural town. And it re this episode really captured that that just terrifying feeling of darkness, so kudos on that. Um, the, the descent into... Um, in, into the, the Realm of Darkness, where the Castle Terminal is, I thought it worked pretty well, because they are going down, and that does give, you know, it's like, like Dante descending into Hell, almost. Uh, that that's exactly what they're doing, and of course, they have this dark guide. I mean, it's not Virgil, but it is, you know, this dark guide that's, that's taking them down there, and again, they're going almost vertically. Um, so that was pretty good. And I, the, the fight between the pawn and the Bildio, I think, w was pretty good. You had to have a Zor battle in there. It also captured the feeling of the darkness. But I do have to ask. Um, now, again, this is not the last episode. But from an in-universe perspective, from Tokyujur, they're having the la they, they believe this is their assault to save uh, Subaru Gahama. That this is going to save their town. So why do they only bring five of their five Resha and the Bildio? How come the police rush out, the car rush out, the tank rush out, the diesel O, um, the, the terminal itself? Uh, how come they don't call up help on the Galaxy Line? How come none of the other trains that would be in this situation are coming? They should What they should have done is link every single train together and follow Glitter on down. They should have taken everything they had with them. And they even speculate that their powers are not going to work the entire time they're down there. So what sense does it make to bring, you know, two Megazords when you need to bring all of them just in case? I mean, you don't know what's going to happen. I mean, do you think that in war that somebody's like, yeah, we got 5,000 soldiers, uh, but let's take 20 down there just to be on the safe side? I mean, it's... It's it's really annoying that particular part of it. Um, as far as other things go, I mean that's that's pretty much the bulk of the episode. I'm really hoping the payoff is going to be interesting. Uh, I I hope that again the connection between Zet and Wright is going to be substantial. It's going to be interesting for us. I hope the fact that he's turned into this Black Ranger um, is going to pay off in some way that Wright learns a lesson that he, he his again his arrogance and foolhardiness is what will ultimately be his downfall or somebody's downfall from this action because I like consequences. I really do. I like the consequences meaning something to our characters, whether it's positive or negative, and that's something we really don't have in this series is those consequences. So. Again, let's see what happens as we continue forward. Uh, so next time, we will be going on to Station 55. We'll see what happens as right as the Black Ranger. We'll see if the Castle Terminal uh, is taken out and where we go from here. 
So, I want to thank you all for listening. Have a good evening. The tavern is now closed. <laughs>